Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this panel discussion, the deployment of 5G, growth complexity and optimizing connectivity. Uh, my name is Joel Stradling and I'm the founder and lead analyst at Claven Research. Um, I actually think the panelists uh, can introduce themselves in this occasion. So perhaps starting with you, Daniel, and moving across, could you kindly, uh, you know, name job title and perhaps a little bit about focus area and context of why you're on this panel? Sure. So uh, Daniel Lawson, I'm from Verizon. I run our advanced technology group within our, uh, our, our business organization, so primarily focused on B2B. Um, we obviously see 5G as um, you know, primarily beneficial and mostly beneficial for the enterprise space, uh, as well as um, obviously the public sector, federal governments, um, you know, those types of things. So my team is focused um, really intently on how we incorporate that into the broader ecosystem of technologies that enterprises are buying today, like SD-WAN and, and virtualized services at the edge, we just, like we just heard about from Colt. Uh, my name is Mats Johansson uh, from Ericsson, uh, working as a marketing manager uh, within the space of uh, NFV broadly across all the layers and I've been involved with the SDN since the start of it in, in 2012 and, and uh, the NFV and, and onwards. So I cover the entire area within the business unit uh, digital services within Ericsson, which is primarily the area where let's say most everything uh, except radio. So the core networks, uh, packet core IMS, the cloud platforms, the billing systems, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, of course, as you know, Ericsson, we're involved in, uh, in the rollout of 5G across uh, uh, service providers uh, globally, so in, in, in all aspects, more or less, of the telecom space uh, primarily. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, Simon Dredge. I am uh, the Director of Technical Marketing at Metaswitch. Uh, I cover our entire product portfolio, but I'm currently focused on our uh, 5G core network infrastructure. Hello, everyone. My name is Ulysses Luce. Uh, I'm from the Quanta Cloud Technology. I'm responsible for the telco solutions, business deliverance, and also the software partner lenses and open source communities. Uh, KZD is a very, uh, it's a hardware based company, but uh, in the NLP architectures, uh, we tend to work with a lot of uh, uh, software partners for the NLP uh, realizations. And especially, we have uh, several projects uh, with open source communities, including all RAMs, all NAP. And also, we are the one uh, uh, hardware partners for the uh, cloud native uh, Rakutens, if uh, I think you have uh, heard of, uh, a lot of no uh, news about the uh, Rakuten case. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sven Freudenfeld. Um, I'm the uh, CTO of uh, the telecom division at uh, Lana Electronics. Uh, Lana Electronics is building solutions dedicated for network security. And over the last couple of years, focusing on white boxes, specifically around SD1 uh, and universal CPEs, and moving towards the uh, multi access edge compute platforms and solutions, which is including uh, networking, computing, storage, and uh, acceleration. All right, well, thank you very much. You know, I think uh, to, to set the scene for the discussion uh, around 5G, you know, I, I think my first question to the panel is really, what does 5G mean to you? Um, you know, in the weeks leading up to this event, I contacted the panelists and they shared there as they're looking at and the topics and discussion points. Complexity seemed to pop up quite a lot. Um, so we'll sort of get to that. But before we get to that bit, you know, what, what does 5G mean in terms of services for the industry and the transformation that's going to take place? And then I think after that question has been answered, um, we can move into, you know, the, the, nut, the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty of uh, what those complexity issues are and how to scale and so on. And, and this is, I'm throwing this out freely. Whoever wants to take that question on first, please just go right ahead. I can take that if you want. I yeah, mean, please from do. my perspective at least. Um, I think 5G isn't just, a, isn't just a marketing term. I think that's the most important thing to state because I think it has been banded around um, certainly recently as it's just a marketing gimmick, right, 5G. Uh, I, I also believe it's uh, about more than just new radio. Um, I think it's about an entire end-to-end -end solution. I think it's, it's, a, it's a whole new way to build 
mobile network infrastructures and it, it demands attention from an end-to-end -end perspective. So um, I think it's about new business models and, and, and new technologies that, uh, that, that can really help uh, deliver new services and new solutions. Hmm. Yeah, I'd echo that. Um, you know, it's, it's more than just an evolution of what we've seen in the past. It's really, I think you can look at it as a platform. Uh, and upon, upon that platform is where that innovation will take place. And you know, it's important to think about the, the technical components that underpin that platform. So obviously Spectrum is one. Um, the, the radio equipment, um, the, the, the virtualized functions that run the network, um, the small cells, uh, and then the edge compute, which really kind of creates um, options within the platform that different types of applications, different business models can leverage, whether it's data volumes, whether it's enhanced throughput, whether it's lower latency. And that's really where I think a lot of this innovation is going to happen. Yeah, so on, on, from what I can say on this, uh, the 5G is just a gen generic term. The underlying technology is really a network virtualization function. Uh, and then there is uh, software-defined networking. Um, so uh, the virtualization piece is a very important one. Uh, and also looking at uh, the, the, the networking uh, aspect in terms of how many devices and what type of devices. And I think the key element here is because 5G is opening the doors for more vertical uh, networking capabilities, how you know, network slicing will be introduced into the market. Um, because this is very new territory for everyone, uh, uh, slicing the network, right? So that's uh, mm -hmm. my take on that. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> uh, from the infrastructure solution uh, provider's point of views, uh, I think uh, Simon and Daniel has mentioned about end-to-end -end perspective. Actually, it's very important because when you talk about 5G, it's not just the network facilitations, especially you need to talk about, you need to think about the performance the SLA, the QoS, in every aspect, from the core data centers all the way to the edge. So for, for us, we, we really need to think about what kind of workloads or kind of performance that requires in each, in each location, in, in each uh, 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 point. So um, of course, it's very, com uh, it's very uh, complicated, but uh, the partners' collaborations is also the key to realize the overall to the 5G uh, scenarios. Do you have anything to add, Matt? Yeah, to yes. I mean, I, I think uh, maybe I, I, I agree with the, the other speakers. However, I think that we, when we six or seven years ago started to talk about, uh, and, and this at the time there were like four billion connected humans. We started to talk about 50 billion connected devices by 2020. Uh, we didn't really reach that number, but, but we certainly have come close to that. And in order to succeed with that, the, the, the uh, sort of the prospect of IoT being, being, so, being so large was uh, the need to build a single network for all ap applications and for all workloads. And, and why? Because if you don't do that, then uh, or a lot of these IoT applications would have to build their own infrastructure, and that would not have been a, a viable business case. So that, that, I think that that's in, in the light of that, 5G uh, fills that purpose. And I think it's also a reflection that when we started to talk about SDN in 2012 and NFV, uh, no one talked about 5G at the time. Uh, but then it became evident that these were the building blocks and foundation for 5G. And I think this is now recognized by everyone. And this is why we're sitting here. So, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that entirely. You know, uh, that some key themes that have popped out from that. You know, 5G, it's a generic term. Just to read back some things that you said, it, c it could be seen as a platform. Um, it's an end-to-end -end solution in, in, in one case as well, as Simon mentioned, and then it's a commercial business case in the other. And I agree with you entirely about the SDN and network automation side. Um, can 5G exist without those things based on legacy networking technologies? You know, I kind of think I know the answer to that, but I'd like to throw that one out there. You know, there's the complexity popped up again in all of your responses, more or less across the board. Um, without automation, can you actually operate a 5G network? I, I mean, I, theoretically, I suppose you could, but you handcuff yourself, right? Yeah, you, absolutely. You, you, you're, you eliminate your ability to take advantage of 
things like network slicing because you're limited to, um, you know, if you're not virtualizing functions, mm -hmm. you're limited to whatever the hardware can support. Uh, and similarly with automation, right? If, if everything's software defined, but you're relying on people to do the work, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't scale. Yeah, yeah and, and it also depends a little bit on, you know, what you, what you mean with 5G. Sure. And I think there are two, two views of, of that. I think the, the, the first one, which we all addressed here, it's, it's the, all of these applications, these new things, the slices and everything, or it's simply the new radio, which uh, At its know, simplest some people version. Yeah. tend to believe. Yeah. And, and if it's only about the radio, yeah, sure, you could, you could do right. it. And you gain spectrum efficiencies and you gain uh, more capacity in the in the radio space, but uh, it, it, you don't expand on the new possibility mm -hmm. for new services in the same way. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are not going to be biased here. Go figure. Um, <laughs> but I don't think five. Don't worry, everybody on the panel's biased. Yeah, it's exactly. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think five G obje objectives can be met without uh, uh, again a, uh, a complete core implementation. I think it's about more than a new radio. I think. I think the, those core components have to be deployed as cloud native network functions as, as well. Going one step further and suggesting that you know uh, the, the the entire core infrastructure uh, must be public, private, or even hybrid cloud uh, network based, uh, even down to the, uh, the, the 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 data plane, which is obviously fundamentally hard to do. Uh, but unless you're uh, turning everything into software uh, and deploying them as software components from the core to the edge, then you're not going to meet the, the business goals of, uh, of 5G from a, uh, from, a, from a cost perspective, uh, from a performance perspective, and from the applications you hope to deliver from that platform. So, um, well, 5G is for the new world transitions. Actually, it's not just putting the software defines everything on top of the Always, right? Mm -hmm. you, you actually need to understand, uh, for example, when we're deploying, when we're working with the Rock 10s, actually, we need to look into from the manufacturing uh, process into the infrastructure deployment every step by step. What I mean is that if we want to look into the automation process and put into the overall uh, 5G infrastructure deployment, actually, the collaborations between the, the, the hardware vendors and also the software vendors, the partners, actually need to be work very closely together than before, so that when we are deployed, uh, for example, the edge servers in the different edge location, maybe you, you require different BMC bows, firmware updates, and how can you make sure that in this batch is really can shift in that, the, the right directions. So everything needs to be, you know, uh, the, not only the API, but the overall process need to be maintained very closely. So automation, of course, is, is definitely very important for that. Yeah, yeah so the way I see that is, um, with, the, with the trend of 5G, it's, uh, there's a lot of unknown coming. So when, when we design platforms which are software defined, um, the aspect of scalability is a key element um, because the growth rate, we hear a story earlier from called about SD1 and, and, and universal CP deployments on that. We are just, even if we're talking about for many years already, but we are still in the beginning of a deployment. Most of the service providers are just starting with the enterprise edge and then moving towards a, a multi-access compute side. But the scalability as aspect, you know, now we have multiple software vendors on, running on the same hardware resources. How do you scale this? Um, it's not easy to, because we don't really know what's the ramp up rate for connecting all these different devices and different type of devices to the same networks. So the scalability aspect is very important because you want to make sure um, the rollout for 5G is uh, seamless because nobody will use 5G if uh, hiccups. Uh, and it's impacting the network in general. Um, so, I mean, there's uh, uh, 5G trials going on with service providers, but they don't want to go public until it's a proven technology and the scalability is a big aspect on that. From a compute networking, uh, storage capabilities, as well from a, from a so software perspective, mm -hmm. how to manage this with either new technology, with you know, programmable networks, with uh, Kubernetes and containers and all this. This is all new territory. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how do you scale this up? Right? Mm. Yeah. Well, if I could stick with you on this one, this next question, then Sven, seeing as you, uh, you know, kind of mentioned the edge and the scalability aspect here, you know, I think uh, what 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 is your view of how the edge plays into the whole 
5G story, you know, and, and perhaps we can work back this way. But, you know, any conversation <laughs> seems to include that at some point. Yep. And as we move into edge compute, how do you run VNFs there and manage them and control them? You know, what, what, yep. what's your view on that area? So as I mentioned earlier, so we've been involved in some of the uh, SD1 players and software partners we're working with. Uh, the initial rollout is typically a requirement for LTE today, right? So each of the devices, custom and premise devices, will have a radio device and a 4 or 5G eventually. Uh, and when, which networking path do you take on the customer premise equipment? So you have Wi-Fi and you also have LTE or 5G. You know, which one is the path, how you manage it, and how do you make uh, the resiliency valuable? And then the second aspect is that when you move from the customer premise towards the multi-access edge compute side, uh, you know, considering that's the real network edge, um, how do you manage network traffic coming in, right? So you have all these different vertical markets. So network slicing will start at the multi-access edge compute side, because at that point you need to separate the traffic and treat it in priority based on, on what you carry on this network. Um, and the, automa the automation part there is, you know, how do you measure that? How do you measure latency in the network? Um, you know, how do you, how do you relocate uh, or reallocate resources? Um, so if you have a, a certain limitation on compute resources, how do you redirect traffic so you can process it somewhere else if that given resource is not available? So there is a lot of dynamics in the network configuration, so network programmability will become a, a key element in order to make it seamless. And would anybody else like to contribute on this aspect here? You know, with the edge, it seems to be, you know, you've hinted that there's an un unknown, it's the, the deep abyss and scalability. You know, what, what, what would anybody else's view be beyond that and managing the complexity? You know, I think Ulysses, you made some points about the complexity of the IT and communications tech yeah, uh, so, coverage. Uh, so, 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 so uh, uh, in terms of the edge computing, it's actually for us, so, we would like to look in the uh, in other ways, like we would like to look from the use case. So what kind of use case, what kind of the requirement for that use cases uh, uh, can, can com comply, need to what kind of the network slicings. So we want to look in that ways from the, for, for the edge computing. So recently, we are working with uh, cloud VR companies in Taiwan. Um, originally, we were thinking that uh, we are building uh, Actually, the, the, the test base like this, uh, we're building, we're using the 5G NRs uh, with the 5G cores NSAs and putting their uh, cloud VRs uh, at edge. So to make sure that the, 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 uh, the runtime trip, the latencies can be fulfilled, the customer requirements. Originally, we were thinking that maybe 10 milliseconds will be the best fit. And they said, no, we don't need 10 milliseconds. 15 milliseconds should be great. It's good enough. So this kind of the... Uh, lesson, uh, not lesson, and this kind of experience of doing the use case uh, really help us to understand what kind of the accelerations, what kind of requirements for the age can be fulfilled the real use case and, and generate the real business in the end. So uh, in QCD sites, uh, we, are, we, we have a team focused on the enterprise 5Gs. Mm. Actually, we are trying to move in the age into another levels, we call the enterprise 5G. So focus on enterprise, and we would like to use the enterprise 5G as a, as a use case to tell our, our telco customer that this is really workable. And so when we are talking about edge computing, it's not just software-defined everything, but the real use case, the real use case that can drive the business. Mm. Yeah. I think, Daniel, you've had some use cases that you've <coughs> highlighted there, transportation and so on. Would you like to elaborate a little sure, bit sure. Yeah, because on those points? Yeah, because Sven and, and Ulysses are exactly right. I mean, the edge is critical yeah. uh, because it enables things that, that aren't possible if you're at the network edge or, or potentially at the, the customer edge. So as an example, um, you know, think about in, uh, in transportation or in manufacturing, every 4K video uh, endpoint can become an analytics engine. So you're driving value into um, elements of the network that maybe didn't exist before because the capabilities weren't there. So that could you know, lead to uh, enhanced safety capabilities. It could lead to um, you know, a, a really differentiated retail experience where you, know, you see, you're able to see in, in high def, you know, uh, a customer walks into a retail storefront, you know, glances in a particular direction versus another. So you can put high value products in a certain area and, and really collect customer information that's, that's usable to generate business, right? You know, you know uh, 
um, outcomes for of that particular business. Um, and then, you know, just using some of the, the capabilities of the, the network technology, right? Think about the fact that um, millimeter wave will travel at roughly 500 kilometers per hour. So you could be, you know, as, a, as an airplane comes in for landing at an airport, you could be pulling, you know, massive readings off of, um, you know, 4G cameras that are on that airplane. Um, you can't do that type of analytics with that little time frame unless yes. you have compute at the edge. Yes. So there's lots of really, really interesting use cases out there that you have to bring the technology together, but also the experts in each of those those, sec those sectors of the economy, so that you can have like have that that true collaboration and build those use cases. Okay, that's great. And so um, well, this this I question. Think, uh, sorry, go ahead. Maybe yeah, maybe I'd like, I'd like pick up on that just, one. Just just pick up on the. I mean, there are the use case aspect, and there is, uh, let's say, the deployment and the platform aspects. And uh, in in our in our minds, uh, we see it as important that the edge is linked to and is part of the is a distributed cloud out of the central data center. So it's it's for, it's part of that. It's orchestrated in the same fashion, and the, we define the edge as something that is below 20 milliseconds. Is is what we consider as the edge at the moment. And we believe that, for instance, central office locations will probably be one of the early early versions that will come along. Then, of course, uh, I agree with others here that we will have the enterprise prem and, and we will have uh, radio sites going forward. But, but uh, the orchestration is very important because if you look at the, take a country like France, Italy, something like that. Maybe, maybe they will need a hundred sites like that to cover, to get into a 20 millisecond, possible, you know, possibility for 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 that space. Uh, and al already that is quite a lot of uh, sites to manage and to lifecycle manage and to manage overall. Going in, into the deeper edge, it'll become even more of a of a challenge. So you need to have that orchestration capabilities as well. But we believe that it will fit well with the current, uh, let's say, NFV, Etsy, NFV, Mono structure. Mm. Of course, we, we uh, are adapting the cloud native uh, capabilities of, of the Kubernetes, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, but we believe that this could be managed altogether. Mm. And, th and that's, I think, required for the efficiencies that we, you need to have at the end, the end, uh, in the end. And one of the comments you made, Matt, actually was, uh, Matt, was um, operational transformation related to efficiency. You know, what does right. that mean for you? What did you mean by that when you... No, but I mean, I, mean, I think this, this goes back to my... Uh, now we're talking about the edge here. If we take a step back, I mean, the... the the telco cloud, uh, the reality, if we look at our footprint, uh, is, is around uh, 140 customers that we're working with globally. So, so it, it's, it's, it's quite a substantial number. Mm. Uh, and and, and uh, the reality is that the majority still are, have built vertical appliances. So which means that they could have packet core from one vendor on a, on a virtualized stack, perhaps an OpenStack, they could have IMS from another vendor, uh, and, and then they could have IoT from a third vendor mm. with different, uh, different types of virtualization environments. So if you're in that situation, which is not uncommon in the industry, uh, then you need to rethink how do you do, how do you come to a, a, a telco cloud that is horizontal, that can be orchestrated and network sliced, et cetera. So, so a lot, we see a lot of interest from operators to rethink their strategy. How do, how do I evolve this into a telco cloud? Where, as you of course have players like, like Verizon and, and, and Swisscom, Docomo, Telefonica, among the ones we have been working with, who have directly started to build a horizontal cloud. Mm. But for those players to succeed, they need to change the way they operate. And I think this is, this is the reason why we have seen these vertical stacks, because it's, it's the same, you don't have to change your operational model in, in, that, uh, in that paradigm. If you go into the horizontal cloud, then you need to have a team that works only with the NFEI layer, 
such that the application uh, responsibles can trust that the platform will uh, work for the next coming release. And if you're going even further into CICD, which is what everybody is talking about, then you have, need to have a lot of things in place. So that, that is a lot of this work is still, this fundamental work is still Underway. remaining for many operators, and which is where, where we try to engage and, and help. Okay. Well, we've actually got a minute and a half left according to the counter then. <laughs> Did anybody else want to pick up on that point? Or should I go to Simon with the, what does cloudification of the 5G data plane mean question? <laughs> I'll leave it up to you guys. How, well, we should uh, carry on with that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> that I think. We also made a comment about the interworking 4G, 5G. You know, are we trying to fly before we can walk? That was my question on. The, Say again, sorry. The interworking that? between 4G and 5G. Shouldn't we get that sorted first? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, that comes down to uh, making the move to, to, to 5G as, as as fast as possible. And I think. Uh, if you look at the current migration options that are out there and people adopting certainly from the, from the, from the early stages, uh, option three being the one that comes to mind, of course, uh, it, it promotes um, keeping, uh, effectively keeping uh, an evolved packet core uh, at infinitum. Um, so uh, and even if you move to 5G, that it then means uh, running uh, two distinct core infrastructures, the, uh, the, the 5G core and the uh, existing EPC. So uh, certainly we promote getting away from uh, uh, that 4G core uh, as fast as possible and moving to a single 5G core. But of course, that uh, involves additional uh, elements into working functions. But uh, again, if you make that move away from that EPC directly to a 5G core, even to support that LTE traffic, uh, then you can uh, you know, save yourself having to maintain and manage that uh, uh, two cores. Okay. Well, with that, we're actually right on, on the button with time. So I'd like to thank the panel for uh, being super sports and sharing their insights and knowledge. Uh, it was a very enjoyable discussion, and, and, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.